In this online lecture, we're going to discuss the nomenclature of aldehydes and ketones, but let's talk about the nomenclature of aldehydes first. What you see in front of you is our aldehyde. Notice it has a carbonyl group. On one side of the carbonyl, there's an alkyl R group. On the other side, of course, is a hydrogen. And let's start out with the most basic aldehyde, this one right here. This aldehyde is only one carbon big, and a one carbon big molecule, if it were, let's say, an alkane, it would be methane. And what we're doing is changing the ending of this name to methanal. So that's all that's really happening here. We're taking out this E and putting an AL, of course, because AL means aldehyde. And that's all there is to at least the IUPAC way of naming aldehydes. However, there's also the common name for aldehydes, and for this particular common name one is formaldehyde. And remember, there's no IUPAC system for this. They're all common, so you're going to have to become just familiar with them. Let's look at another example here. This is a two-carbon long aldehyde. His name would be ethanal, and his common name would be acetaldehyde. Let's look at another example here. Let's say you have a substituted aldehyde. In this case, the aldehyde takes priority, so the carbonyl would have to be numbered 1 here, and the parent name of this molecule would be butanal, and since he has a bromo on carbon 3, we would simply call this 3-bromo-butanal. And if you're going to use the common name system here, it would be beta bromo aldehyde. There is somewhat of a system to this. Remember, with the common name system, we don't use numbers, we use those Greek letters. But first, let's break down the name. This part of it, butyr, that's explaining that the molecule is four carbons long. And of course, aldehyde is telling us that the molecule is an aldehyde. And the beta bromo comes from the way we label the carbons in this molecule. The alpha carbon is always the one directly next to the carbonyl group. So this would be beta. This would be gamma, and there we see the Br on the beta carbon. Let's look at even another example here. This molecule, notice again, four carbons long with the carbonyl being priority one. And the parent name of this molecule, of course, again, is butanol. There's a methyl on carbon three, so we simply call it 3-methylbutanol. But notice the common name for this would be isovaleroaldehyde. Notice we're not using beta methyl to name this thing because the entire structure has a common name. So watch out for things like that. Here's another example. What if you have two aldehydes on the same molecule? Well, the name of this molecule would be hexane diol. Hexane because it's six carbons long. Di because there's two Al aldehydes. Notice you wouldn't have to number where those aldehydes are because, of course, the aldehydes always have to be at the end of a molecule. So numbering would be unnecessary here. What about cyclic structures? If you have an aldehyde on a ring, the name of this molecule right here is trans-3-bromo-cyclohexane carbaldehyde. Again, the aldehyde takes priority, so that's why this would have to be carbon-1 on the cyclohexane ring. That means numbering clockwise, that puts the bromine on carbon-3 within the ring, hence 3-bromo. And then, of course, we have to add the prefix trans here to denote that the aldehyde and the bromine are trans to each other. And since we're talking about rings here, what about a benzene ring with an aldehyde? Well, his name is benzene carbaldehyde. However, his common name is benzaldehyde. Now, let's look at this next example right here. Notice this molecule has an aldehyde, and it also has an OH group. Before we name this molecule, we need to know which functional group takes priority. Well, here's our official list of nomenclature priorities. Notice aldehydes are at number 5 here, and alcohols are at number 7. That means the aldehyde takes priority. So, going back to the molecule here, if the aldehyde has priority, that means he is going to be in the parent name of this molecule. In this case, since it's six carbons long, it'll be hexanal. 
And notice our OH would be on the fourth carbon in this chain, so we would have to say 4-hydroxy. Therefore, this molecule is 4-hydroxyhexanol. To make sure you got this, let's look at another example here. If you were to name this molecule, again, make some observations about which functional groups are present. Notice we have an aldehyde right here, and we also have an ester on this side of the molecule. And let's go to our nomenclature priorities. Notice aldehydes, again, is number five. But look where esters are here. They're actually number two in priority. So now the ester has priority in this case. So let's go back and name our molecule here. You obviously need to know your ester nomenclature here. And if you remember, this is how it worked. First, we number the carbons. And notice, again, if the ester takes priority, that means that carbonyl would have to be carbon 1 in the ester. And since the molecule is 6 carbons long, we would call this hexen 8 Now we have to emphasize where the aldehyde is. He is on carbon 6. So to do that, you say 6-oxo. And the last thing we need to take care of is the methyl side of this ester. And if you remember in nomenclatures of esters, you list that before the name of the molecule and you leave a space. So in this case, one carbon means that it would just be methyl. So the name of this molecule is methyl space 6-oxohexanoate. However, let's look at a little more trickier example here. What if you have this molecule right here? Again, you got an ester right here, and you got the aldehyde. And we know, of course, remember the ester takes the priority in this case. However, it's almost like the aldehyde is like a substituent in this case. And you could actually call this formal. Remember, the simplest aldehyde is formaldehyde. And when you treat something as a substituent, you give it that YL ending. So going back here then, let's number our carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, the parent name of this molecule would be hexanoate. And it looks like right here we got the formal on carbon five. So let's put that into the name. That would be five dash formal. And then again, naming the methyl on the other side of the ester here. That would be one carbon big. So again, the name of this molecule is methyl space 5-formal hexanoate. Now, what if you have something like this? You have an aldehyde and technically an alkene. So here's your aldehyde. Here's your alkene. Which one takes priority? Again, let's go back to our list here. Again, aldehydes is 5. And notice alkenes are right here at number 9. So the aldehyde would take priority. So going back to our example here, that means we would have to number the carbons this way. And that would make the parent name of this molecule technically hexanal. But since it has an alkene functional group, we simply change the A in hexanal to hexenol. But if you remember from alkene chemistry, you have to denote where that double bond is within the chain. And the double bond happens to start at carbon 3, so we would say 3-hexenol. So the name of this molecule is simply 3-hexenol. Now let's talk about the nomenclature of ketones. Remember, ketones differ from aldehydes because they have carbonyl groups, but they have R-alkyl groups on both sides of the carbonyl. So let's start with the most simple example here, a 3-carbon long ketone. If this were an alkane that's three carbons long, it would be propane. But instead, we would call this molecule propanone. Notice we're simply changing the E ending to own because, of course, the molecule is a ketone. The common name for this molecule, you've probably heard it before, is acetone. But ketones actually have another alternative method to name them, and they call it the derived name. The derived name of this molecule is dimethylketone. There is somewhat of a system to this. For instance, notice our ketone has two methyls, one on each side. So that's where the dimethyl part comes from. And then we simply leave a space and put the word ketone. To make sure you got this, let's look at another example. 
This molecule right here is four carbons long. It is a ketone, so you would call it butenone. However, in this case, we need to number the carbons. And remember, we always want the lowest possible numbers. So we would want to number this from left to right because we want the carbonyl group on the lowest number carbon. And since in this case, that's carbon two, we have to specify where the carbonyl group is in the ketone. So we put that into the name as 2-butanone. And to make sure you got this derived name method here, the derived name of this molecule would be ethyl space methyl space ketone. Notice on this ketone you do have a methyl on one side and an ethyl on the other. So you list both of those groups in the derived name. But you have to remember to put them in alphabetical order. That is that E ethyl goes before M methyl. Let's look at some more examples to make sure we got this. If you had this molecule right here, firstly you notice it is a ketone. And let's find the longest chain here. It would be six carbons long. That makes the parent name of this molecule hexanone. And we would number from right to left in this case because we want the carbonyl group to be on the lowest number carbon. So that means so far we have two hexanone. This in turn places the methyl on carbon five. So we have to put that in the name. That would be 5-methyl-2 hexanone. Remember the fact that this molecule is a ketone takes priority. So that's why we're numbering from right to left because we want the carbonyl on the lowest number, not the methyl on the lowest number. You can even apply the derived name to this molecule. The derived name is isopentyl methyl ketone. That's because on one side you have an isopentyl group, that's on the left, and on the other side you have the methyl. And again, the I in iso goes before M in methyl. Now, like we saw before with aldehydes, what if you have a ketone and an alkene within the same molecule? Notice here we have the carbonyl group and right here we have the double bond. Who takes priority? Well, let's go back to our nomenclature priorities. Notice ketones is at number six here and again alkenes at number nine. So the ketone has priority. So going back to this, that means then that the ketone is gonna take priority so the numbering system would have to be in this direction. Now, once that's established, we're going to call the parent name right here hexenone. Own, remember, is because of the ketone. And we have to emphasize where the carbonyl group is in the ketone. And he happens to be on carbon 2. Then remember, in the name we also have hexen. That en is telling us we have an alkene or double bond but we also need to specify where that double bond is. And notice our alkene starts at carbon five. So we would call this molecule 5 hexen 2 ohn Now, what about ketones that are within rings? The name of this molecule would be cyclohexanone. And of course, if you put any substituents on this, the carbonyl group would have to be carbon number one. And what about ketones attached to benzene rings? The common name of this molecule would be acetophenone. But you can also use the derived name system here. This molecule would be called methylphenyl ketone. Again, because you have a phenyl on the left side and you have the methyl on the right side. Now, what if you have a molecule that happens to have two ketone groups? Again, you would number the longest chain and then put in the parent name of the molecule. It's five carbons long, so you would start out by saying pentane. And because it has two carbonyl groups, you would then say dione. But we have to emphasize where those carbonyl groups are. One is on carbon two, the other one is on carbon four. So we would call this then two comma four dash pentane dione. So if a molecule had three carbonyl groups, you would have to call out the number of each one, and it would be trione. However, this is a very popular molecule. He has a common name. It's called acetylacetone. Now, that's how we handle the naming of a molecule if it has more than one ketone. 
But what if a molecule has both, in this case, an aldehyde and a ketone? Who has higher priority in this situation? Well, let's go back to our chart here. Notice aldehydes are five, ketones are six. So the aldehyde takes priority. So going back to this then, let's take care of this aldehyde first. And since the aldehyde has priority, he's going to be the carbon one within the chain. And since it's four carbons long, that makes the parent name of this molecule butanal. Now, next we have to emphasize where the ketone is in this molecule. And we do this by saying 3-oxo. So the name of this molecule is 3-oxo-butanal. So naming aldehydes and ketones, there's definitely a lot going on here. That's why this nomenclature priority chart is so important. We need to stick to it. You don't have to try to make sense of this chart. For instance, why is carboxylic acids 1 and why are alkyl halides 13? It actually has to do with reactivity. Typically, the more reactive you are as a functional group, the higher priority you have. But we just need this chart to figure out who has priority, which functional group that is, has priority in the naming of a molecule.